Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can use the Select and Mask tool to remove and replace the background in your portrait photos. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo. And today I've chosen two photos. Firstly, I've chosen the photo of the model, which we're going to be cutting out using the Select and Mask tool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place that model onto this background here. So what we're gonna do is firstly open up the model photo. And what we want to do is to actually create a quick selection, and then we're going to use the select and mask tool to cut out the background. And as you can see, we're gonna put it to the test today because we've got these very blurry, very fine hairs that you can see all around the model, which usually would be incredibly difficult to cut out. Let's see how well this select mask tool works. So firstly, we need to create a quick selection. So what we're gonna do is gonna go over to our quick selection tool found on the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and actually create a quick selection. So I'm gonna go around and create a quick selection by dragging it just like you would do a brush tool, making sure it has selected all the areas that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it like so. Now, if you make any mistake, all you'll need to do down is hold Option or Alt on your keyboard and then you can simply reverse it. And you can actually click on this section at the top here. You've got three different tools, new selection, add to selection, which is the one I recommend doing. And then if you want to subtract from selection, you can also do that, which is really handy. So once you've created the selection, all you'll need to do now is access the quick selection mask. So again, going into that quick selection tool, at the very top here, you can find the select and mask tool. And this is a really handy tool in Photoshop. So let's go over to the properties panel on the right hand side. Firstly, we've got our color here. So if we go ahead and click on that color, you can actually select any color of your choice. And what I recommend doing is choosing an opposing color to the background. And for instance, I've chosen chroma green, but for instance, you could always choose, for instance, a blue or any kind of color you choose. But I'm going to keep it chroma green for this instance. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Just above that, you've actually got your opacity. So you can increase the opacity of that color and decrease the opacity of that color depending on what type of photo you're working on. But in my case, I usually keep it around 50%. And then it has the indication here. So you can have selected area, which is the area that we're going to be keeping, or you can mask out the background, which is the one I recommend having. And then we've got a bunch of other areas here, such as edge detection radius, and then we've got a bunch of smoothing and feather. But what we want to do instead of using these, we're going to actually use the Refine Edge tool. So if you go over to the left-hand side panel, you've got a bunch of tools here. You've got the Quick Selection tool, which is the tool we originally used, and the one below it is the Refine Edge tool. And this tool is really good for cutting out hair or any complicated objects. You've also got the Brush tool, you've also got the Object Selection tool, the Lasso tool, the Hand tool, and you've also got the Zoom tool. So let's go ahead and use the Refine Edge tool first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and zoom in, making sure you've got that selected. Zooming in to an area first. And what you need to do is find that edge, and we're gonna go click, drag along that edge here. And as you can see, Photoshop will really look at that information and it will try and create a better cutout than it did originally. So all you'll need to do is work all the way around on your photo, making sure that you are happy with the edge before we go ahead and export it, and we're going to be exporting it as a layer mask in this particular case. So all we need to do is go all the way around, and I'm gonna do that now. Now, if you want to change the size of the brush, you can do as well, but it just depends on what size of the area that you're wanting to cut out. So for instance, we've got this larger area here, I'm actually going to increase the size of my brush so it easily cuts out the hair in the background. So we can really split it away split the model away from that background that we're going to be removing in this in case. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it around. And then again, you can make that brush a little bit smaller and we can move around to the more finer detailed edges here. So we've got this little bit up here and then that is it. So we'll go ahead all the way up until you are happy with the cutout that you have created. Now, obviously you can always change the color if you so wish. I find using like this chroma green at 
is really good for seeing how well this cutout has worked. So once we've done all of that, what I recommend doing is going, instead of adding in smoothing, I wouldn't recommend adding that when we're adding in hair, I would recommend adding in a slight feather. So I'm gonna add in a 0.5 pixel feather here. And then the rest of this information I'm going to leave. Shift edge, I'm going to keep as 0%, and I'm also going to create the contrast of that as well. So let's go ahead down to the output settings you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and click on our output settings. Instead of choosing selection, we're actually gonna go down to new layer with layer mask. And then we're going to go ahead and do disseminate colors. We're actually going to select that in this particular case. And what that'll do is it will smooth out the background, but only when we're completely removing the background. Otherwise, you're going to have a haloing effect. So we can make sure we'll have that button clicked. And once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And what this will do is we'll open it back up into Photoshop. And as you can see, that background has now disappeared. Now, a quick trick that I find for creating really good backgrounds is by going down to your adjustment layers icon in the front in the bottom right hand corner. And we're gonna go ahead and choose a solid color. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a solid black to start off with. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And all you need to do is drop this below your brand new layer that you've just cut out. And you can actually test out how well this cutout has worked. And as you can see, this has worked out absolutely amazingly. It has done a really, really good job. So all you need to do is zoom out. And what we can do now is actually place a brand new background. So as you can see, we we'll go to our background that I've got on my desktop. Again, guys, the link to this photo is in my description. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag that from my desktop, and we're gonna go ahead and drop this on the brand new photo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it as large as the canvas, and I'm gonna drop it down a little bit lower, as you can see here. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click Enter on your keyboard. But as you can see, it's a little bit too sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to add a simple blur layer. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, I'm gonna go down to blur, and then I'm gonna to go to Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur this layer around about 15 pixels. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So as you can see, we have now created a totally new background. And I must say, it looks so realistic and really, really good. I am so happy with the results. So what I can do now is show you the before, and I'll show you the after and we have created a really, really good cutout, simply using the quick selection tool and then using the select and mask tool. And it has worked such a treat. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about Photoshop, Lightroom, and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you guys don't miss anything. You can find my latest Photoshop tutorial just up here and you can find my latest two minute tutorials just down here. But until next time guys, keep creating.